Yo, it's your boy JP Productions and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, I need y'all to find that thumbs up button to smack it one time for me. And then after you do that, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I recently made a video explaining the pros and cons of having a one motion shot. If you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to do that ASAP after this video. For today's video, we're going to be doing the same thing, but this time we're going to be covering the two motion shooters out there. If you are interested on learning how to shoot with a two motion shot, I already have a video on how you can achieve that. Just peep the link in the description after the video and I'll have it placed down there for you. Let's hop into the pros of a two motion shot. Number one, high set point. Depending on the player, their set points at times can be right above their eyebrows, a bit above their forehead, and at times, some shooters raise it above their head. Having a high set point helps players have the ability to shoot over taller defenders. No matter the defender's height or wingspan, add that two motion shooter's high set point with that possible high jump. Now that will be very difficult to block. Number two, easy separation when shooting off the dribble. Shooting off the dribble can be simple for both one motion shooters and two motion shooters. But it takes skill and a two motion shot to unlock a deadly fadeaway shot. Whether you're fading away to your left, right, or just shooting a dirt one legged shot, it takes skill and the ability to jump back and fade away. Number three, no pocket shooting. To have the ability to shoot tough shots with the ball not even in your preferred shot pocket can and is tough. The ball could be on your left side, right side, the top of your head, or even your body might not even be squared to the rim. Due to two motion shooters having a set point, two motion shooters have the freedom and a slight second to shoot out of any tough situation. Here's an example. You're running to the right side of the court and your body's facing baseline. And you have to shoot it. Because of your two motion shot, you have the freedom to be completely squared towards the sideline and turn in the air and get off a good look because due to you having a two-parted shot, the ball could just sit at your set point until your body gets squared towards the rim. Versus if you try doing that with a one motion shot, it could be very difficult because one motion shooters never pause the ball throughout their release because it's all in one motion. So instead of taking that second to adjust, they'll just end up slinging the ball towards the rim which won't be a good shot at all. Number four, you have more control. While picking up the ball after a dribble move or off the catch, transferring the ball through your shot path into your release point, some errors can occur if you don't have the right hand placement on the ball. I understand that each pickup after that last dribble won't always be clean, but if you pick up the ball in a desperate situation in a game and you know for a fact that your hands aren't right, then it will only hurt your chances to make that shot. Things from an inaccurate shot, unnecessary offhand assistance, and more. Versus a two motion shot, you can make the same errors, but because they have two parts throughout their form, they have the ability to reset and make some slight adjustments once the ball takes a slight rest at their set point. That will conclude the pros of a two motion shot. Let's get into the negative side of things. Number one, more leg and stamina usage. Because of two motion shooters having two parts to their form, it requires more strength from their legs to shoot the ball and stamina. As a hooper, I think we all know when it comes to the fourth quarter, that will be the period of the game to see who really has the strength mentally and physically. Keynote for all shooters, be sure to always work on increasing your stamina. Shooting air balls and hitting the front iron could be a factor for you if you don't have strong legs and stamina within you. Number 2. Athletic Hoopers Only You guys know I always preach that it's vital to have two jumpers. One for your set shots and one for your mid-range pull-ups and fadeaways. But the thing is, when it comes to being a dominant two motion shooter from all ranges of shots, it takes strength to do that. Which is why you never see any great small players as a dominant two motion shooter. Some athletes are strong enough to have a two motion shot and that's good for them. 
But if you're a small player who's striving for a dominant two motion shot, then I advise you that your game and range will be limited. Number three, slower shot. When you think of two motion shooters, you got Joe Harris, Larry Bird, Ray Allen, and plenty more out there. They of course have a decent quick release, but it's not as quick as a one motion shooter's release. Having a slow shot can hurt a shooter if you take too long getting into it and releasing your shot. I recommend all shooters to strive for a shot that works best for them and build on it for making things much smoother and faster for you. And now I'm not trying to stop you guys from becoming a two motion shooter, I just want you guys to keep in mind that if you do choose to go on this route, your shot will be a tad bit slower versus a one motion shot. That's going to wrap up today's video, please be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, feel free to drop a comment as well on what you think I could have added to the list. It's your boy JP, till next time.